<laughs> going live, going live. Says we're live. And I'll refresh here. All right. See how my lights look. Looking good. Looks good enough. Hey everybody, who's here? Anybody there? Can you hear me? Yep. No, I'm asking them. I'm asking them, Julia. Oh. <laughs> now I want everybody who is on a little early, well, it's actually three o'clock. I would like everyone to sing happy birthday to Julia. Oh. It's Julia's birthday today. And um, we're gonna have a little online party afterwards. Uh, unfortunately, it's a private party. But <laughs> just the social team. Sorry, right, guys, that's not live. No, it's not live. We're not doing that live. I know you'd like to see Julia's party, but it's not going to be live. Because there's going to be alcohol, and we don't do alcohol on, on live video, right? All right. one sip for Canada. Oh, Germany. Germany, that's right. Yeah, Germany. How could I forget Germany? That's where my ancestors are from. <laughs> All right, so it is three o'clock. It's after three, and we are going to tie a Parachute Adams today. Uh, parachute Adams is the most popular dry fly. Uh, it works all the time, almost all the time, for almost every species, of, for every species of trout. Uh, it's just a great fly to put on when you don't know what to put on. It just plain works. Nobody has any idea why a parachute atoms work. I have my theories, but I'm not going to bore you with them because they're probably wrong. Um, it's also a very difficult fly to tie. I hate tying parachute atoms. I really don't enjoy tying parachute atoms because they are difficult. Um, but since it's such a popular fly and it does show us some, you know, some tricks that we can use in other patterns, we're going to tie a parachute atoms today. So bear with me. Hopefully I won't screw it up because um, it's just plain tough. It's a tough fly to tie. And if you have trouble with you tying along with me today and you have trouble with it, it's mainly winding the parachute hackle that gives everybody fits. And um, I hope to show you a few little few little tips on on how to wind that hackle. But um, some of it's in material selection um, and um, getting the right getting the right hackle is um, can be can be difficult. So do the best you can with what you got. Uh, you can make lots of substitutes here. You don't have to use brown and grizzly. You could use ginger and grizzly. You could use blue dun and grizzly. I do think having a, a grizzly or some sort of modeling in this fly is important because I think the, the, um, the stripes or the, the speckles, by the time you wind it, on the grizzly hackle give this fly an impression of movement. That's what, that's what everybody seems to think is that flies with breakup patterns Seem to seem to give uh, an impression of movement and, and something that's alive. Whether it's a you know a teal feather in a salmon fly or a speckled feather in a streamer fly, it seems to seems to give uh, the impression of a little bit more movement that we can give it. So um, some sort of speckled feather. But other than that, um, 
you can use lots of things for the wings. And let's go through a few materials that, that you might use for the wings. So the original, as far as I know, the original parachute atoms, and I think Orvis was uh, the first one to actually uh, promote a parachute atoms or sell a parachute atoms. Years ago, we had a selection of parachute flies when they were kind of new and exciting. It was kind of a new pattern for people. And we tied, we had various like Cahill parachute and Hendrickson parachute and Adams parachute. And the Adams parachute just took off like crazy. And the original ones were tied with calf tail. And this is a calf tail. Uh, I want to make sure everybody can see it okay. And um, it's difficult to find a good calf tail. You need a calf tail with really straight fibers and fairly fine fibers. And most calf tails have really curly hair and it's just plain difficult. And calf tail is quite bulky. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I'll show you when we get to the close up view, I'll show you what a fly looks like with these various wing materials. I've tied some up, but that's calf tail. If you have a good one, fine. Um, but um, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough material to work with and it is bulky. It leaves a big lump. Um, then we have calf body hair, and this is what a lot of people have gone to. Uh, most of the commercial flies that you see, if they're not tied with a um, synthetic material wing, they'll be tied with calf body. And calf body is, is much cleaner and straighter than calf tail. Maybe hard for you to see, but um, calf body, and again, you can get a lousy piece of calf body and you can get a good piece of calf body. This happens to be a nice piece. And, and when I go to, uh, you know, one of the, one of the uh, fly fishing shows, I'm always running around looking for a good piece of nice, fine, even uh, calf body. If you get it with a lot of long, scraggly hairs, it's not as good. But again, you know, use what you got. Um, you know, once, once we can get out, we can all get, get out and about. You can go to a fly shop and find yourself a good piece of uh, calf body hair. But it's nice stuff to work with. Again, it, it still is kind of bulky and kind of difficult to work with. And you, should, you probably want to stack it, which um, I'll show you. And then probably the easiest thing to tie your parachute atoms wings with is a uh, white synthetic. And yes, it could be pink or it could be orange if you want. I like white wings. I think they're more visible than, than anything else. Uh, I think they're even more visible than hot orange. And um, this happens to be uh, EP trigger point fiber, but you could do, and this is very, very fine, but you can use, um, you can use regular EP fiber. You could use a uh, uh, Sculptin Flash. Uh, you could even use white macrame yarn if you get some uh, macrame yarn floats really well. You have to untwist the macrame yarn and comb it out to get um, a hank like this. But this is really easy to work with. You can trim it in the end um, and it doesn't create any bulk at all. And uh, we'll tie one. Hopefully we'll, we'll have time to, we'll tie one. Well, we'll make time, right, Julia? We'll tie one. Um, <laughs> We'll tie one with calf body, and then we'll tie one with the synthetic wing. How's that? Okay. Um, and then we talked about the hackle a little bit. Um, I'll talk about selecting hackle when we get into tying. And then the body of this is just gray fur, whatever you want. Um, whatever, kind of, whatever kind of fur you want, it's just kind of a medium gray. The original Adams called for muskrat fur. And if, you, uh, if you're a trapper or you know a trapper uh, or you have access to some muskrat fur, this is a, a piece that I got from a trapper. I actually got a whole skin that will last me the rest of my life. Um, muskrat's really nice. It's very fine. It dubs beautifully. And um, being a water animal, it probably has some water repellent properties. So if you got some muskrat, use it. If you don't, any old gray fur, super fine poly, 
the Orvis Spectre Blend Dry Fly is really good and it's it's almost as fine as this muskrat fur. But um, you want a fairly you want a fairly fine fur. Muskrat Rabbit works really well. Uh, the base of a uh, gray fox or re even red fox uh, skin has some gray on it or uh, a gray synthetic. So any gray fur. All right. And the thread uh, officially on an Adams is black, but um, you can tie it with any color. I tie a lot of mine with tan because it blends into the wing when I'm tying it. So um, I'll tie a lot of them with tan, but if you want to tie an official parachute Adams, the thread should be black. And you want to use 8-0. You want to use a fine thread. If you don't use an 8-0 or even a 12-0 thread on this fly, you're going to be sorry um, because you're going to build up too much bulk and you're not going to wait, like the way your fly looks in the end. Okay? So do we have any questions so far? I bet we do. We have. Yeah, I think, Roger, it's probably 20 to 30% more difficult than a regular Adams. Although the regular Adams is not easy either. Um, but it's, I think it's even more difficult than a regular Adams. I think it's more effective and more durable and more visible on the water than a regular Adams. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a tough dry fly to tie. And you can use Antron. It doesn't float as well as those other yarns, uh, as uh, Parapost or EP Fiber. It uh, doesn't shed water as well as those others, but if that's what you got in white, then use it. Yeah, it'll work. short shank and the proportions aren't going to look quite right but the fly will fish fine um it's just you know it's just too aesthetically to to my eye and probably to most people's eyes um tying on a 1x short it's just not going to look right but it's it's going to be fine why would you use a regular adams instead of a parachute timothy would like to know i would i would <laughs> Almost never use a regular Adam instead of a parachute. The only time I would use a regular Adam instead of a parachute is if flies are really skittering on the water and um, the fish are kind of taking them in the air or taking them as they're twitching on the water or maybe getting blown by the wind across the water. That's a, probably the only time I'd use a regular Adam as opposed to a parachute. Parachutes just... They, they float well, the, the body sits down in the film so it can look like an emerger, and um, you just can see them better. Ryan asked, how about tying it in purple? Question mark. Yeah, purple, purple is very popular in uh, Adams. We're just tying the official, more or less original Adams, but purple body, they call that a purple haze, and um, I think they, or they rip, I think it might have a, uh, purple flashaboo rib or something like that, but uh, purple body is really effective, and no one knows why. Because there aren't any purple mayflies. There's some that are sort of purplish, but there aren't any real purple mayflies. But it is a really good color. To uh, in fact, that's a. I'm glad you reminded me that. I'm going to tie some purple ones when we're done here because I forgot about that. No, no, I don't. I don't have any plans to yet. Um, the La, La Fontaine deep pupa. Yeah, I know we talked about the other day. They're hard. Maybe I'll tie one. Let me practice a little bit. Depending on how long we're all shut in, um, <laughs> maybe we'll maybe we'll do one later on because it's a it's a cool fly, but it's nasty to tie. I'm already tying one difficult one. The parachute atoms, guys. Come on, let me tie some easy ones. 
Yes. I tie it about one and a half to two times, so about the same. I use about the same length. You could you could tie it longer if you wanted to, though. Um, it would just be a little bit bigger profile, and it might land a little lighter on the water. But yeah, you could tie it. You could tie it longer if you wanted to. Try it. See what happens. See how it works. I wouldn't go any shorter. Oh. Sure. Hi, Bob Jones. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark's asking, Blue Wing Olive and Adams, when would you use each? Well, I would use a Blue Wing Olive when there's Blue Wing Olives hatching. <laughs> kind of kind of self-evident. And I would use an Adams almost any time. Uh, almost any time. I'd use an Adams during a Blue Wing Olive hatch, and I know lots of people who use... Small parachute atoms during a blue wing olive hatch, and it works quite well. So, uh, either or. Okay. Um, Mark's asking, what is your favorite blue wing olive hatch? A lot of people are kind of just chiming in about what they like to use, which is helpful. Yeah. Um, Timothy asked, do you glue slash UV the post? I, I, uh, I do with synthetics, and I think we'll do that. We'll do that on okay. the, on one of these flies that we tie. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's all the questions for right now. Okay. Shall we shall we tie? Let's tie. All right, let's tie. And um, my, the first one I'm going to tie in a size 12, and then the second one I'm going to have to tie in a size 14 because I am down to one size 12 dry fly hook. <laughs> I have to reorder some, so. Uh, I try to make these as big as as big as I can so that you can see them, but we're gonna have to go to a 14 on the on the smaller one. So um, avert your eyes because I'm gonna move the uh, move the lights and and move the camera. So get ready. It's gonna be it's gonna bounce around a little bit. everybody's doing well and I hope everybody's staying healthy and um, if you're not I hope you are going to get better real soon you know I don't know what size on a tail water um, oh, uh, one of those things you got to really experiment. Um, who knows what to, you know, it depends on what tail water and uh, I, I can't, I really, I really couldn't, uh, I really couldn't say. Just Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I hit my emergency SOS button by mistake there. <laughs> we're back on. We're back on. What? You're back on. It did pause real quick. Yeah, I, for some for some crazy reason I hit my emergency SOS button <laughs> when I touch the touch the screen. How's that? It looks okay. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, Okay. Okay, I gotta move. I gotta move something here. I gotta move this around. I gotta get in between the legs here. 
there. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, questions. Oh, thank you, Julia. I always, I always forget. I know, you're here to remind me about my background. There. And I apologize if there's a little noise in the background. Uh, my dog Greta has decided to take all of the books off of our shelf. Oh, interesting. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put a size 12 hook in here. There we go, size 12 hook. And I'm going to start my thread. Really? That's the that way? Yeah, to the camera's right. That way. Yep. Is that better? Nope. Okay. Yeah. So the, the hook's more centered. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. So, um, if you follow the official Adam's recipe, the tails on the fly are mixed brown and grizzly as you see here but um it's it's sometimes hard to get it's sometimes hard to get really long um long fibers long enough fibers for tails if you're using a genetic cape or if you're using saddle hackles they often don't have long enough fibers in these spade hackles on the side so what I do is I'll go through all my capes, because I have a, a lot of capes, and I'll find a grizzly and a brown that have nice long fibers in, in, in one, of my, one of my capes. And they're usually the lower quality capes have those good spade fibers. But you know what? Um, a lot of you, a lot of you don't have a whole bunch of capes to sort through. So um, one of the one of the things you can do is to use that Coq de Leon that we've been talking about because that has that nice speckling and it kind of looks like brown and grizzly together. And I'll show you an Adams with that used as a tail. So here's a parachute Adams. <laughs> it's hard to get it there. There's a parachute Adams with that uh, Coq de Leon. So it looks pretty nice. But if you, if you want to really mix the tails, now I hope, it, hope everybody's tying along with me now. I do have a couple uh, questions, Tom, if you're ready. Okay, go ahead. What, what, what? What area, I'm guessing, of fly fishing or in fly fishing do you still feel that you don't know much about? Oh, my God, there's so many areas I don't know that much about. Euro nymphing, I'm still not that good at. Uh, uh, swinging flies for steelhead. Um, God, you know, trout fishing. <laughs> I don't know much about. <laughs> I see. Okay, um, Ken is asking, does the parachute Adams ride lower in the water than a traditional Adams? Yes, it does. It rides lower in the water because of the orientation of the hackle. And I see John asking about pheasant tail fibers for work on, for tails on dry flies. They'll work, but they're pretty water absorbent. Um, they might work better as, as if you want to do kind of a shuck, and they aren't very durable. Um, so you could, but um, I I wouldn't. How important is matching the tail fibers with the hackle being wrapped around the post? It is absolutely, totally unimportant, Dane, but that's the way the Adams is tied. Okay, we have a couple ones from earlier. Um, someone's asking, please ask Tom about that wooden desk on the top right of his desk. Is it used because organized? Question mark. That's from William. 
Yeah, it's a uh, it's an old uh, it's an old hook organizer. I don't think it's sold anymore. It just you put uh, you slide uh, your boxes of hooks in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to match these tails. So I'm going to take my brown hackle and my nice long brown hackles, and I'm going to pluck a bunch. And then I'm going to, you'll have to imagine this because I can't show all this, but I'm going to lay these on the side of a table or a pack of Post-its or, or someplace that it's convenient where they stick out over and then I'm going to take my grizzly, my grizzly ackle feather, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab a bunch of fibers. And again, this is totally unimportant. Totally, totally unimportant. Um, it's just the way the atoms has always been tied. So um, it, do, it doesn't matter at all. And, you know, I, the Cote de Leon is so much easier. You just, you don't have to to mix them and match them. So I'm laying these on the table, if you can imagine that, and I'm kind of lining them up with my fingernail, and then I'm just going to grab them all together so that now I have the brown and the grizzly all matched up. Does not matter to the fish, and doesn't matter to most fly tires, but you know what? And I just screwed up my... I just screwed up my hackle fibers. Um, if you're going to tie an Adams based on the pattern, then that's the way you tie it. But a lot of you ask me, can I, can I, can I this? Of course you can. Um, what sometimes, and the, the, probably the a better thing to ask is, what do you think of using? Because you can use anything you want. And um, you might as well try it to experiment, but you may want to know my opinion because I might have tried it before. I'm lining up some more hackle fibers here because I screwed it up. There we go. All right, they're pretty lined up. They're not great, but good enough. Okay, so I got those hackle fibers lined up and I'm gonna hold them at a little bit of an angle coming toward me. Oh, first I have to get back to the back to the bend. All right. So, going to measure them about a shank length. I'm going to hold them at a little bit of an angle to me and just let them roll over. I'm going to spin this thread a bit to get it to roll back and it roll back on there. Oh, you know, it depends on how, how stiff your hackle fibers are. I would say there's probably 20 in there. 15 to 20. So I'm going to wind up here to about the halfway point. I'm going to cut off the rest. Those hackle fibers aren't going anymore, anywhere. And then I'm going to go up to just, you know, about a, maybe a quarter behind, quarter of a shank length, maybe not quite a quarter of a shank length behind the eye, right there. And what are we going to tie first? Let's do the, let's do the difficult one first. Let's do the, uh, let's do the calf body hair. And asking, will a small hair stacker work to align the hackle fibers? Yeah, a small hackle, yeah, that would work. It's kind of hard to get them out of the stacker, but a small, yeah, a small stacker would work, a really small one. Good idea. Um, Gordon asked an interesting question. Would it still be an Adams if you use different material for the tail? No, oh, I don't know. I'm sure it would. Depends on, the, you know, would it still be an Adams? It depends on who you ask. I would say, yeah. Some really snotty dry fly purist might say, oh, no, you have to mix the tails. So I'm going to grab some, I'm going to grab some of this uh, calf body and trim it. All 
I can't do it in front of the in front of the uh, phone there because I'm doing something top secret here that I don't want anybody to see. No, just kidding. All right, now I'm gonna. I got that calf uh, calf body. And I'm going to hold it by the tip ends and just remove the little fuzzy short hairs. And then I'm going to put it in a stacker. And don't scrimp on this stuff. You need a fair amount to get a good wing profile. This may not even be enough, um, but we'll try it. So now I'm going to, I'm going to put it in my stacker. Just dump it in there carefully. And then I'm going to wrap this on the table. And again, I, I like to spin this around. It kind of helps the fibers align. And then hopefully... Turn this sideways very carefully and I'm trying to get it and pull it out and didn't work very well. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to start all over again. That didn't work for some reason. I'm going to cut a new. See why I hate parachute atoms, guys? They're tough. They're really tough. It's not an easy fly to tie. But I, uh, I applaud all of you for trying it, for being here and trying it. I'm just cleaning some more calf tail because something didn't happen right with the stacker. All right, let's try it again. Oh, it fell out. I'm going to use a smaller stacker. That may help. That stacker might be a little bit too big, so I'm going to go to a I'm going to go to a shorter shorter stacker. I knew I'd have trouble with this damn parachute atoms. Whose idea was this, anyways? Whose idea was this to tie a parachute at him? What a pain in the butt fly. There we go. Now you can see those ends are nice and lined up, and I just want to carefully grab them. Uh, he's asking, is using parapose one strand enough? Uh, well, I don't know what one strand is. You want about, if you're using parapost, you want probably at least a hook gap in diameter of, of your synthetic. So this much from the point to the, from, from here to there. All right, so now I got my wing and I want it to be, if I get any fibers that are sticking way out there, I'll just pull them out. I want it to be about a shank length, so I'm going to measure it. Move it a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to carefully come over the top and keep my finger on the far side and squeeze that so it doesn't roll on me. I'm going to move back a little bit with each turn. Stacker lines these up so that they're all nice and neat. Totally, totally unimportant to the fish. Only important to the fly tire. And then I'm going to try to attempt to trim these back ends here at a little angle so I get a little taper to my body. This is going to be the underbody, and I see I cut my thread there, but if I'm careful, I can... 
I can go and repair it. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way back because I cut my thread. Oh, I knew I'd have trouble with the parachute atoms. But there, it's pretty, pretty neat. If you have a little bump there, you might want to fill in a little thread um, to get a nice taper on your body. Now, people worry about an extra few turns of thread on a dry fly. It's minuscule. It's minuscule. The added weight, a couple extra turns of thread are going to be. So <laughs> don't worry about it. That's the least of your problems. Okay. Then I'm going to raise this wing up and push it like that. And I'm going to come in right in front of that wing and build up a thread dam right at the base of that wing. And I'm going to, I'm going to take quite a few tight turns there because this thing tends to want to lean forward and you want it to stick straight up. Maybe even a couple more turns. And you can see I use a lot of I use a lot of calf hair there. Used a lot. Um, because by the time you put the parachute post in there, this thing is gonna compress and you want a fairly wide wing so that you can see this thing on the water. All right, now I'm gonna post the wing. And posting the wing is I'm gonna gather all these fibers and I'm just gonna take some turns around the base of the wing. So I'm going horizontally now, right around the base. And I'm gonna go up a little bit and you can see already how that wing is getting compressed. I'm gonna go up, I don't know how far. Any opinion on what? Foam posts. Foam posts. That's a really good question. They're, they sell these foam posts. And I thought, when I first saw them years ago, I thought, oh, cool. That's, that's really awesome. Foam posts. I don't have to worry about, about the wing. And, and I bought some of these foam posts, and I tied a whole bunch of parachute atoms. And honestly, they didn't work very well. The fish didn't. I, I, my impression was and this is totally unscientific, that the fish did not like those foam posts. And it's too bad. It's too bad because it's a great idea. And maybe they'll work better for somebody else, but they didn't work for me. So, uh, so I'm going to tie this first one uh, with saddle hackle. And here's the deal with an Adams, and one of the toughest things. Again, you guys know that I measure my hackle, if you've been watching, by just fanning it around there. And that's about one and a half times the gap. And then I'm going to look at my grizzly that I pre-selected, so hopefully it's right. And that's about the same length. And you can even take them together and make sure that they, make sure that they line up because... And this is totally unimportant, again, to the fish, but the Adams just looks a lot nicer if both hackle fibers have the same length fibers. Both hackle feathers have the same length fibers. And because you're not picking them from the same cape or from the same saddle, they're from two different birds, uh, then you can have problems. So I'm going to strip the base of both hackles, and I'm going to give myself a fairly long stem like so. I'm going to do the grizzly. I'm going to, I'm not going to use this. I know it looks like wasteful, but the bottom of this feather is twisty and I know it's not going to behave and I'm just going to waste it. Maybe I'll use it for nymph legs or something, but this, this bottom part here is just not going to, not going to behave for me. So I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, Tom, a couple questions. Yeah. I do when I use a synthetic wing, and the next one I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie it with a synthetic wing. But I don't, I don't use it, you don't need it, I don't think you need it on, uh, on these, uh, on this uh, calf body, and it, it would make the calf body compress even more, and you wouldn't get that nice broad profile. 
So, uh, and this is stiff enough that I can wind over that. Uh, Tim Flagler um, developed this method of using UV resin right at the base there um, to, uh, to stiffen it. And it really is important with synthetic, but not so important with calf body or calf tail. Okay, now I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to try to put both of these feathers in so that the dull side is facing me and the shiny side is facing away. This seems to make them wind better. And then I'm going to start in front of that post and I'm going to take a few turns there and then I'm going to pull these straight up and notice that I got a little bit of room here. I don't want I don't want to tie the fibers right in cuz when I make my first turn it might uh it it might get in the way. So, now I'm going to go up that post again. And nothing. Nothing the parachute atoms imitates nothing and everything. It's it's just a good fly, and no one has any idea. The original Adams was tied to imitate a deer fly in Michigan. Believe it or not, a deer fly because they fall they fall in the water in you know northern rivers. Um, but it's just it's just got a good combination of colors and materials uh, that just works. You know we. We agonize too much over what things imitate, and sometimes we just need to accept that it's a good fly. Now, I'm trying to get in here, and I'm trying not to knock my phone. I'm just going to come in and cut cut those. And because I put them in at an angle like that, they're going to stay pretty secure because um, I started here, and then I wound up the, uh, wound up the post. I'm going to actually go up there, give it a couple more turns. Now, you could, if you wanted to right now, put a little head cement or UV there, but I wouldn't on this. Now, I'm just going to, I'm going to hope, hope those stay out of the way, and I'm going to leave them there, and I'm going to go back to the bend. Hopefully, that won't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the Adams, the Adams um, calls for two colors, a brown and a grizzly. You could, ju you could just use brown and just use grizzly, but, um, or you could use any two colors you want. But the Adams, that color combination seems to be really successful. And again, we don't know why. Nobody knows why. Now I've got my nice... My nice ball of uh, muskrat fur here. And do you guys want to see how to prepare muskrat fur? Want to see how to do it? What do you think? Do they want to see how to do it? i got to reach behind here and grab my muskrat. So this is the same with a lot of furs. And, and you know, it's so easy to buy package dubbing these days that people don't, people don't prepare their own furs. But it's really easy. And... Um, Hopefully you can see this. So I'm just going to come in and cut this muskrat fur very close to the skin. And I pulled some off. I'm just going to do a little bit here to show you. And you'll notice that there's some guard hairs, some thick hairs. And I'm just going to hold the base of that fur. And if I carefully pull... I can pull all those nasty guard hairs away, and now I'm left with just really nice fur, and then I just kind of tease it together like that. And now I've got a real, really nice ball of uh, muskrat fur that I can use. So it's that easy, not that hard. All right, now I'm gonna make the body, and I'm gonna give this body a little taper. So I'm taking just a little tiny bit Oh, it's hard getting in here with this camera. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to back this vise off just a bit here while I do this part. And then I'll come back. Right, I've got a, a couple questions when you're ready, Tom. Okay, well, let me just um, get this dubbing. Yeah, it's still t getting a phone call coming in. We're back 
Okay, yeah. I should... I gotta probably figure out how to not accept calls. So, that's pretty uniform all the way down there. And then where I want to build up my taper, I'll just carefully add more small amounts down toward the bottom so that I build up that taper. So just add a little bit on there. And I don't know how much I need. Okay, so that looks like it's going to be a little too thick. So to me, it looks a little too thick there in the bottom. So what I can do is just come in and pull it a little bit. And that'll, that'll thin it down. All right, let's see how this works. I'm going to try to take that first turn of dubbing right in front of the tails. And then I'm just going to wind it forward. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of a taper there. Oh, it looks like I'm going to have just enough. Perfect. And then I'm going to go in front a couple turns. There. Okay. Now I'll come back if, if I can get a little closer here. Sure, yeah. On this on this fly, I like to strip it because I don't I don't want those little nubs to get in the way here. And because I tied this hackle in at right angles, it's not going to tend to pull out. Um, so yeah, but you could you could just leave the little nubs. Um, I usually do that on on wet flies and nymphs and stuff. But on dry flies, I'll often strip uh, I'll often strip them especially on parachutes. Okay, so now we're gonna wind the hackles, and do you wind the brown first or the grizzly first? And I have, I have constant, um, I have constant arguments with myself. <laughs> Which one to wind first? Uh, I usually like to wind the one with a thinner stem last because it fits in between the winds of the other one. So I know this grizzly stem is um, is a little thicker and I'm what I'm hoping the way I tied it in is that that will flip over so that the shiny side is up and sometimes you have to back it off. This is not going to want to go the way I want it to because it's not. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it's going shiny side down now. And you can see that post is stiff enough so that, and I'm winding down. I'm starting at the top and I'm trying to wind down. It's really to space it properly, but um, you do the best you can. So now I got the hackle off to the side here. And what I'm going to do, I don't, I'm not using hackle pliers here because these uh, saddle hackles are long. I'm going to pull up on the fibers, leaving that, that hackle stem there. And I'm just going to grab that hackle stem with the thread and tie it off kind of on the far side and underneath. Um, Tom, a couple people are asking, why not wind both together? Or That's a good you? question. Why not? I don't know. You could do it that way. Maybe maybe on the next one I'll do it that way. It's another another thing that you could do. And then I'm going to carefully come in here and trim that tip off. And with that being a saddle hackle, I got enough for another fly or two. And then I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to hope that it flips the proper way and if not I'll kind of back it off and do it again but it looks like it's going to go properly and I'm just going to kind of kind of weave it in between wiggle it back and forth and weave it in between those grizzlies and I'll keep winding until it starts to bunch up just so I get myself lots of hackle in there okay 
So now I'm gonna tie off the brown the same way. I'm just gonna pull these up. So all that's exposed is the hackle tip and I'm gonna catch it. Take three nice tight turns. And then I'm gonna very carefully and you might want to use your thread as a guide or so that you don't, uh, I can't get in here with, that's probably not going to be. And then I'll take, I'll pull that hackle back out of the way, take a couple more turns just for security, and then whip finish. Um, and there's a trick to whip finishing parachutes. I'm going to back off a little bit so that you guys can see this better. Sorry about the, sorry about the wiggle. So I'm going to whip finish here. And if you start your whip finish, get that, get that triangle into the head and then use your, the fingers that are holding the bobbin to just pull that hackle back. And now you can whip finish without binding under any hackle fibers like so. Now, take your fine scissors because you know what? No matter how well your parachute atoms comes out, there's always going to be some hackle fibers that don't look right. They stick out the wrong way. And this matters very much to me as a fly tire. So I'm going to go in and I see a couple of them just, oh, well, that's not bad. I didn't screw up too badly. But there's just a couple that I don't like, and I'm just going to trim them out of there. Cheating, I know. I'm cheating. But I cheat. I cheat a lot. Oh, I don't like those. I'm getting rid of them. There. Perfectly all right to trim. So there's, there's your parachute atoms, and, and you know, it, it just looks better when all the fibers are kind of uniform, the brown and the grizzly. And then um, pretty important with, um, with this way of uh, uh, tying a parachute atoms is to put, some, uh, put a, a couple of drops of head cement at the base of the wing. That's your weakest point. That hackle's going to come off there. So what I'm going to do, and thank you, Michael. My head cement is opening nicely now. I'm going to use my deep penetrating head cement. And clean off my dubbing needle. And I'm just going to go in here and just let that, let that head cement go down into those hackles. Um, Bill's asking, if the hackle is too long, is it okay to trim them shorter? Sure, why not? Absolutely. And then I'll, uh, I'll also put a little head cement on the bottom of this fly, right at the head. Where are we here? Yep. And then uh, there's your parachute atoms. And you might want to to keep that wing profile nice and wide before that head cement dries, you might want to kind of just come in and pull that wing apart. That'll help force the hackle down a little bit more. And, um, you know, you want a nice wide profile on your wing. So that is my nemesis, the parachute atoms. Quite more questions. Um, uh, John asked, does too much head cement cause them to sink? No. No, the amount of head cement you put on there, by the time it dries, it's not going to... Not going to affect the floating properties. Your floating properties are all coming from the water repellent body and mainly your, your parachute hackle. That parachute hackle is going to hold this fly in the surface film. And, um, you know, you could rib this with wire. Probably put a bead on it and it wouldn't sink. No, you put a bead on it, it would sink. But, um, yeah, head cement, head cement is not going to... 
heard it. Okay. Yeah, it's a really good indicator fly. It's great for a fishing dry dropper, especially if you put a lot of hackle on it and a big wing. But this one's this one's fairly heavily hackled. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's not as probably as good as a foam bodied fly uh, for an indicator fly, but it's it's pretty damn good. All right. Well, I, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about brands. I like to use a paste, as with all flies, I like to use a paste floatant when I first start out sparingly, and then I'll use the um, uh, dry shake or dry and float or the, the white desiccant powder afterwards. My, I like Scott's, your nemesis, mine too. My hackle was wrapped, looked good, and then does Orvis sell these? <laughs> yeah, we sell them. <laughs> what would I put behind it? I don't know. I'd put a little pheasant tail behind it as a dry dropper. Hey, Bill did it. Nice going, Bill. I can read the comments now that I'm not tying. Good job. How many of you, how many of you uh, are happy with your results? Now you want to see the synthetic wing? I'm going to I'm going to start this one uh quickly so that we can get into the wing part. Do they want to see the synthetic wing? Hello. Julia? Yes, I'm here. Oh. Do they want? Yeah, the zebra midge from last week, uh, Eric would be a would be a great uh, a great a great one to hang below this because it doesn't weigh that much. Okay, so if it's ugly, it will still catch fish. Yes, it will still catch fish if it's ugly. It'll probably catch fish better than the neat ones. Ah, uh, look at listen to this, Tim Johnson. Orvis jumped on the parachute Adams bandwagon, huh? Flash in the pan pattern. Won't be around next week. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna tie this one quickly, and I'm gonna use um, I'm until I get to the wing, and I'm gonna use uh, cocktail Leon because it's quicker and it looks really nice for this synthetic one. Oops, forgot to put the tail in. Oh, where is my mind today? I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that uh, glass of whiskey with Julia's birthday party. You're telling me. Okay, so I got some cocktail Leon. Measure it, shank length, tie it in. Tying this at real speed. Trim it off. Actually, I don't need to trim these tails off um, very short because this synthetic wing has no bulk. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to take some synthetic material. I'm going to pull yeah, about that much, about half of what I want. So... Do not scrimp on your synthetic wings. Put a lot in there. So that's half of what I want right there. So that's that's actually a hook gap. Yeah, it's about a hook gap. And then I'm just going to cut this to a manageable length. Doesn't matter at this point because we're going to trim this wing. So it makes it so easy. Then I'm going to wrap... I'm going to fold this synthetic around the thread, about halfway point. I'm going to pull it up, take a couple turns right there, and then I'm just going to post that right now. So look how easy that was, and there's no bulk. It's beautiful. A thing of beauty. Whoops, maybe not. 
It is the parachute Adams. It's Chinatown, Jake. Okay, so I got my post. Get my hackles. See how easy that was? Piece of cake. No bulk, no mess, no fuss, no stacking. Uh, I gotta find a couple of hackles here. Uh, I think I will use neck hackle for this one because I can't find my saddles. So, uh, let's see, this one, nope, too short. I'm gonna come up here. Uh, yep, I like that one. I like that one. That's a good length, I think. Yeah, that's a little short. I'm going to go up a little higher on the cape. Yeah, that's good. So I'm just going to... Only when I... Only when I've got the feather I, that I want do I pull it from the cape. And now I kind of remember how long that brown one was. And then I'm going to come into my grizzly here. Probably have to go up higher. And... Nope, too short. Um, yeah. This is um. This is a uh, EP. Uh, this is EP. Uh, trigger point, but you can use any EP fiber, EP trigger point, whatever. You can use parapost. Julie, I'm running into your beer time. I gotta hurry. Oh, 14 minutes. Okay, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Is that Chris I hear in the background? Yeah, Okay, so I got my I got my feathers lined up. I'm going to cut them. Dull sides facing me. I'm going to start here, then I'll wind them up the post. And trim the butts. Oh, I can't get in there. There we go. Now. Pull these hackle fibers off to the side for a minute. Okay. And then I am going to get my thin, my thin uh, UV resin. And I'm actually, instead of using the applicator, I'm just going to put a couple drops on a piece of scrap paper because I want to be really careful about where I put this UV. So I'm just putting a couple drops on a piece of paper. I'm going to use my dubbing needle. Grab some in my dubbing needle. And I'm going to come in and very carefully just stiffen this post. This is gonna give me not only durability, but it's gonna give me a nice stiff post to wind on. And then I'm gonna hit that with my UV light to cure it. And now I got a nice stiff post to wind on. See, this stuff is so is so fragile that if, if you try to wind on it, it, it'll flip over. It'll keep flipping over. It doesn't provide any support. All right. So, body. Do it. Again, we'll do this quick because we already did this before and it's the same. Do a quick body. I'm going to back up away from the camera here or away from the phone a little bit so I can get in here. Everybody still with us? I don't hear any questions. Did people leave? Okay, I think everyone's just watching and 
Cool. That's amazing, all these people tying together, isn't it? It's pretty crazy. People all over the world sitting and tying flies together. Pretty flattering that, pretty flattering to me that people actually want to tie with me. Most of the time, people don't want to do anything with me. I guess they're really bored. Not, not in my experience. No. Okay, when he's asking, how do you like to tie on your dropper in a dry slash dropper setup? Clinch knot to the bend of the dry. Couldn't be simpler. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Okay. There's the body. Gonna wind it. Oops. Your synth synthetic tends to grab everything. Ooh, I didn't put... Well, maybe I got enough fur on there. See, I didn't... I expected to have some taper up there, but I got no wing butts to worry about, so I didn't have any... Didn't have any taper there. Okay. So, now, do the same thing as we did in the other one. These aren't flipping right on me. There we go. No, nope, that's wrong. So sometimes if you back it up and retwist it, oh boy, that's just not gonna go the way I want it to, no matter what I do. Hmm. Nope. I like straight eyes. No preference. There we go. Ooh, no. Boy, it just doesn't want to, just doesn't want to flip on me. All right. So. Um, Alex is asking, Tom, are you familiar with the winning intro hackle pack from the Orvis website? It's $75 for four half capes of different colors, and it seems like a good deal, but wasn't sure if there's a yeah, they are a good, they are, I can answer that. They are a great deal. Okay. You can tie a lot of flies with one of those hackle packs. That hackle didn't go the way I wanted, but you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't. It looks okay. It's kind of, kind of sticking up a little bit, but. You know, that's that's the way it goes. And hopefully this second one will flip the way I want it to. Wow. Neither of them wanted to flip the way I wanted. That's funny. Maybe it has something to do with the epoxy. Oop, there we go. There we go. It's working. Ooh. See, that's why you stiffen that... Uh, that's why you stiffen that wing, because it'll just flip right over on you. Oh, this is not winding properly. Ah, there we go. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Totally got it. And I'm just kind of, kind of wiggle in there. Ugh. Looks like, looks like. Lousy. It looks lousy. That's a terrible hackle. It's just not. Okay, uh, Daniel asked, my grizzly hackles didn't break, break as I bend to wrap around the post. Are there any tips? No, it might just be a, it might just be a uh, brittle hackle. Probably, yeah. Uh, some hackles are just more brittle than others. I don't think there's probably any, nothing he's doing wrong. All right, that's a lousy parachute atom. I don't like the way that hackle looks. It'll fish fine. I can I can 
push that hackle down a little bit by doing that. Um, and then you trim it, you know, you trim that wing about a shank length, like so. And um, you can, um, if you want, you can taper the wing like this one, or you can leave it, or you can leave it squared off. Doesn't matter. But that's uh, that. So that's a parachute atoms with a synthetic wing. And that's not one I'm very proud of. Synthetic is usually easier, yeah. This one just didn't behave, and that's that's parachute atoms. Sometimes they just don't behave. <laughs> yeah, I think the synthetic is much easier to work with. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, let's see if I can trim that and make it look halfway decent. Still looks lousy. Still looks lousy. That's all right, I guess. What do you guys think? See how that hackle cups up? I don't like that. I like it to cup down, but that's the way it wound and it, you know, it'll fish just fine. Just not the way I wanted it. That's fly tying for you. Okay. Any more, any, uh, any final questions for a Friday afternoon? We'll bring this oh, in. I think people are just saying Roger Bird said better than mine. Uh, oops, hold on one second. No, just lots of uh, lots of compliments here. I don't see any questions. We'll do the Vanna White here. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm doing the I'm doing the Vanna White with the parachute atoms. It's... I wish. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Andrew's asking, does it float better if it cups down, or why the preference? It is it is totally it is totally looks. It is it it does not float. I, I don't think it floats any better if it cups down. It's just me. It's totally just me. See, I'm still futzing with it. <laughs> there. <laughs> there. <laughs> now it's okay, but it's not great. The other one was better. The other one is better. But which one do you guys think is better? The, the calf tail or the synthetic? I'm blocking my light there. Number one or number two? I like this one. I like this one better. What do you guys think? All right. Any more questions before I sign off and have a drink with Julia? <laughs> calf tail looks better. That was calf body. That was calf. Here, I'll show you guys calf tail. Uh... Ooh. Oh, who is, who said that? Jim Jensen. Oh, Jensen. <laughs> Here's calf tail. Here's calf body. See how the, and that's pretty good calf tail, but I just, the calf body just gives you a denser wing. Doesn't float that great. Calf body is not very good floating material, um, but it's pretty. And pretty does sometimes count in fly tying. Right, Dave Jensen? <laughs> Calf body, but doesn't matter to the fish. Yeah, it doesn't. This matters to us, right, Robert? Because it looks prettier. Any other questions? I see a lot of opinions, which is great. I don't see. Final question. Final question. Going once. Going twice. I think everybody's everybody's having a birthday drink for you, Julia. I don't, 
I don't see any more questions. Biggest size? Uh, probably a 12, maybe a 10. Salt water? No. <laughs> it's not a salt water fly. Ever. <laughs> ever. You don't. Aaron Adams would laugh me out the face of the earth if I ever fished a parachute Adams in salt water. How do you like tying print snips? Yeah, Wade, print snips aren't any better. <laughs> They're tough too. But I, I'm better with prints than I am parachute atoms. Do you float in only the wing? John, no, I, I float in the whole damn fly. Hackle, wing, tail, everything. Everything. Just just slap it on there and grease it up. Because it's all going to get wet eventually. And so you want it, you want the whole thing waterproofed. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, and um, I will see you Monday. What are we tying Monday? Uh, Ted's rubber legs, right? Ah, oh, an easy one. An easy one. Ted. Yep. Ted, Ted's rubber. Ted's rubber legs on Monday. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Bye bye.